Hi, I'm Lisa Comfort from Sew Over It, and I'm here with Lovecrafts today to talk you through some beginner sewing stuff. So I'm gonna talk you through the tools that you'll need to get yourself started, so all the bits that you'll need to have in your armory. And I'm also gonna talk you through how to thread up a sewing machine, and also talk you through some bit basic sewing steps. So there'll be three sections to the video. So let's start with things that you're gonna to need to get yourself sewing. So I've got the kind of basic things that you're going to need and you might find that along your journey you'll pick up some other bits but this is the sort of essential kit that you'll find that you'll be leaning to and taking and needing throughout your sewing projects. So the first thing before we get started with the little bits is fabric. You're going to need fabric to sew. So obviously we're dressmaking um, pattern company so also with fabric would be a pattern. So this is our Pussy Bow blouse pattern and this is also our Boho Black Busy Blossom fabric that is perfect for sewing this, um, the blouse. It's a nice viscose jersey so it's the appropriate fabric. So I would definitely say you need to make sure that you're working with the right fabric for the right pattern. But the first thing I'd, thing I'd say about that is you need to be working with cotton if you're starting out from the beginning. Use a nice easy fabric like cotton to start sewing with. So if you're just practicing before you're gonna start making a pattern, um, then cotton's the best fabric to work with. But onto the things that we've got here on the table. So um, you'll also need a sewing machine, obviously, uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, you're gonna need uh, pins. So the, this is a nice tool. This is a magnetic pin dish, which I really recommend because when you're sewing, you take the pins out of your work as you're going and you just pop them on the table and then you can just go whoop and they pick them up. So it's a really handy thing to have on your sewing table. So there is actually a right and wrong pin and I know that sounds silly, but there are pins that will be really frustrating and difficult to use and pins like these that are nice and easy. So what makes this pin easy is the fact that it's got a nice, it's a long pin and it's got a plastic head, you can also get them with glass heads, that makes it easier to hold onto and also easier to kind of put into quite a few layers of fabric. So we really recommend these. Also, it's important that the pins are sharp. So if you buy cheap pins from pound shops or sometimes even from supermarkets, they might not be sharp and this will drive you mad. So it's worth investing in good pins. Um, so a pot of pins is £2.50, £3 from a good haberdasher's. So that's your pins. Then you're also going to need two things for measuring. You'll need a measuring tape. Now, because we're here in the UK, we use both centimetres and inches. What a challenge. So often we talk about body measurements in inches, but we talk about seam allowances and smaller measurements in centimetres. So our tape measures generally have both on both sides, um, imperial and metric, but a tape measure is essential to sewing because you'll always be needing to check things as you're going and measurements and stuff. Also on the measuring side of things is a ruler. Now this is a bit of a special ruler. It's called a pattern master, which is what um, you'll need if you're starting to alter patterns and things. So it helps you put um, certain markings like seam allowances on, helps you go around curves. But to start out with, just a general 30 centimeter straight ruler would also be fine. Or if you think you're gonna be making some basic patterns, then one of these would be a good idea. Or a set square is also good because that can give you a right angle and also a 45 degree angle, which is useful. So to mark on the fabric, you can have either a fabric marker pen. Um, and these tend to come off with heat, um, so uh, they, they're not permanent, that's the key thing. So a fabric marking pen, which is good if you're using a light fabric um, and then the tailor's chalk if you're using a dark fabric. So tailor's chalk can come in this sort of traditional triangle, but you can also get little pens that have tailor's chalk in them as well. Also on the table, we have some little snips, and I've just realized I forgot to grab them, but we've got little snips for cutting your threads as you go along. And then we've got big scissors for when you're cutting fabric. So fabric scissors are a bit more of an investment. You want to be spending upwards of 20 pounds for a good pair. They, you can get them different lengths of blade. Um, really long ones are quite hard to work with, but this is a good length of blade that's nice and weighty. Uh, what will make this a, a good pair of scissors is the fact that the blades are really sharp and they're a good weight, but also the fact that we only use them for cutting fabric. So if you buy some fabric scissors, do not let anybody in the house 
use your fabric scissors for cutting anything other than fabric because that will blunt them. Another thing that will blunt them is accidentally cutting through a pin or dropping them. So do look after them, especially if you're spending money on them. Also, I've got obvious things, which is thread. You're gonna need thread. And the best thread to use with modern machines is polyester thread. It's much stronger than cotton and the machines respond to it a lot better. So a good quality polyester thread. Um, bobbins, which will come with your machine. And I'm gonna show you how to wind those bobbins on. Um, and also hand sewing needles. And finally, before we finish this section, I need to get the element, the, the, the thing that fell on the floor. There we go. So the thing that fell on the floor was the um, unpicker. And unfortunately, an unpicker will be your friend because you will make mistakes. Or well, sometimes there'll be intentional seams that you need to take out. But an unpicker is a really good thing to have. Another little tip, it needs to be sharp, so buy a good quality one. And if you find that your unpicker is getting blunt, get some kitchen foil and just glide the unpicker through it and it will sharpen up that little blade in the middle there. So let's talk sewing machines. So I've got a quite a big sewing machine here and it's slightly more complicated than a lot of the sewing machines that you have at home, but it's the same principle. And that's the key thing to remember with sewing machines. You might watch this video and think, oh, well, I don't have that much machine, so this won't be useful. But it will be useful because all modern machines are generally work in the same way. And I'm also going to talk you through the important things to know about a sewing machine and what you want to look for and what you don't need, actually, and so that you're not going to end up spending more money than you need on things that you won't use. So let's start by threading the machine up, because I think that's the kind of important thing to do and then we can talk through the other features on the machine. So I'm slightly challenging myself here because I've got the machine in front of me and I cannot really see what I'm doing, but I'll stand up and stuff if I'm, if I'm struggling. So the first thing we need to do is uh, wind the bobbin. So you will get these little plastic bobbins with the machine and some machines are metal um, and you, they'll come empty so that you can match the thread that you're using on top. So that's what we're gonna do first. So on the back of the machine, there's a little uh, stem that I'm going to put the uh, thread on. Sometimes it's a horizontal one here and then you'll have a plastic stopper that will go on the um, end to stop it from flying off. Then what we're going to do is go around this little hook here. Again there's usually something like that on most machines and then most machines or all machines will also have this sort of little screw. So there's a screw on the top here and then there are two washers and what you want to do is go around the washers, sort of go around this here and kind of get in between those, those sort of two little washers. And then we're gonna pop the uh, bobbin on here. And then we are going to, this is where it's gonna be hard for me to get, get the direction. Um, we are gonna go round the bobbin. I'm just gonna think about which way, it's this way I believe. So wrap it round the bobbin. And then most machines will, you'll push this little stem over. But on this machine, you push this part over. So that's the only difference that you might find on yours at home. Then usually what we do is we press down on the foot pedal and you press down on the foot pedal. With the foot pedal, you want to have your ankle here, the ball of your foot here, and you press down um, and that will start spinning. And on some machines, you'll need to pull the hand wheel out to disengage the needle, otherwise the needle will carry on going up and down. Now again, slightly different on this machine because it's a bit of a snazzier machine. We have got a button. So I'm just gonna press that button and that's gonna spin round. Now the great thing about this is it won't go too full. It will stop. All machines will stop the bobbin from getting too full. I'm just gently holding this spool because sometimes in the upright ones, when you're winding the bobbin, it can get a little bit furious and can sometimes fly off. So I'm just gently holding it so that that doesn't happen. Oh, you could hear that little beep and it's stopped and it's popped it back. And it's basically said, I'm full. I don't want to eat any more. So that's it done. So then we can lift it off. Now, if you haven't, if yours didn't automatically push it back, you'll need to just push it back, lift it off, and then cut like that. That's something that often gets forgotten, actually. And usually, most machines will not let you pull the bobbin off if you haven't pushed the little stem back. But if it does, what will happen is when you start sewing is you'll be pressing down on the pedal and this will just be spinning round and the needle won't be going up and down. So you'll know then that you haven't pushed it back. So we're gonna take that out of there leave it in here and we're going to start to thread up. So this is a very, very standard threading for all machines. It's essentially, it goes behind this little catch here, behind the screw, and then we're going to go down, up, down and through the needle. 
So I'm going to have to stand up for this. So I'm going to go behind here and then we're going to go down and around this. Now, if you don't have this tension dial, some machines have it up here, then you'll just be going around the plastic bit here. So still the same motion. And then we're gonna go up and around. Now, my little uh, lever inside, my up lever is hidden, but on some machines, when you turn the hand wheel, it becomes more exposed. And if you look at it from the side, I always think it looks like a rabbit with a floppy ear and the floppy ear and, and they've got a little eye in it. So what you do is you pull the thread behind the floppy ear and into the eye. And that means you've definitely caught it in there. We go behind this little um, hook, which is open on the right hand side. And then on the top left of the needle, we've got um, a little uh, kind of angled hook that often gets forgotten, but you want to catch that. And then finally, you're gonna thread your needle and you're gonna thread your needle from front to back. Moment of truth, can I do this upside down? Well, that's a lifetime achievement, something I've never done before, I could do it. <laughs> so that's threaded up now. I'm just gonna allow a little bit of thread there so I don't leave it too short. Now there's two types of sewing machines. There's sewing machines that have bobbin cases that open from the front and they come out. So you have a little trap door you pull that down and you pull the case out and you put the bobbin in. Then you have bobbin cases that are top loading like this one. And so you remove the little plate by pushing this to the side and the bobbin case stays fixed inside it. So you're not actually going to um, take that out. You're going to leave it like that. Now, if you're putting it into a bobbin case that is separate, you want to make a letter Q with your uh, bobbin. So if you hold it up and you're making a letter Q, so the thread is coming down like the stem of the Q, and then you drop it in. If you're using one like this, it's a letter P. So there's your little P. We're dropping it in. And then we're going to find the little gap in the, um, in the case, in the base of the machine, and then pull round to the left. And that's actually pulling the thread in between the little tension plate in the bobbin there. Then I'm not going to put that uh, in on top yet. We now need to make sure that this thread is coming up through under. And I'm going to explain how the sewing machine sews later. But for now, if we just make sure we've done that, and then I'll explain why we have to do that. So what I'm going to do is going to use the hand wheel and I'm going to send the needle down. And I'm turning the hand wheel, to, it would be towards me if I was sitting in front. And I'm gently tugging on this. And if you can see there, I've just pulled up a loop. And that loop is the bottom thread. So if you just pull that loop, you'll then have both threads on top. And then you tuck them under the presser foot and you should have a little cutter on the side of your machine here. You just cut those threads so you've got nothing, nothing's too long. And pop your plate oops, back in. And that's how you thread the machine up. For the other features on the machine, just to talk you through. So we've already talked about where the top thread goes where the bobbin throws. We've mentioned the tension dial, um, but this is to tighten the tension. I would, as a beginner, try and just stick to what it comes in. Um, so it's generally tension around three to five is a standard tension. But when you're getting into using different fabrics and different kind of complicated things, you sometimes need to change that tension to loosen the thread. But sometimes it's there and sometimes it's here. Down in this area, we have got this, which is called the presser foot. Now the presser foot is what sits on top of the machine and holds the fabric in place. And you have different types of presser foot depending on what stitch you're doing. So sometimes when you're using a zigzag stitch, your machine will ask you to use a different foot that will come with the machine. But most commonly you use this uh, foot for the straight stitch, the zigzag, and then you'll change a foot for when you're using a buttonhole stitching that, or if you're using um, a zip, putting in a zip or something, then you'll need a different type of presser foot. The presser foot therefore can come off and often it's just a little button at the bottom behind it here and it just drops off. And then to clip it back onto place, oopsies, I'm just going to drop the presser foot down and it will clip, the little claw will just clip onto the bar like that. So there's a lever at the back that operates the presser foot so you can lift it up before you start sewing, tuck the fabric in, pop it back down again. So that's your presser foot. We've talked about the little thread cutter at the side there. 
Then over on this side of the machine is where all of the sewing stitches are. So you've basically got uh, lots on this machine and we've got a little digital display. There's two types of machines you can buy now. You can get a manual machine where it's, there's no digital display. We can get a digital machine like this one. So if it's manual, you will have two kind of dials that will help you move through the stitches and change the stitch lengths or widths. So you'll have those. Um, and you'll probably have a lever for reverse stitching around here, which I'll talk about once we start sewing. But on this machine, and if you've got another digital machine, you'll basically have all the stitch buttons here, so you can opt through the stitches, and you can change the stitch length as well, and it will all display what you're doing up here. They're usually a very user-friendly and very easy to follow. There's, there's quite, they're quite intuitive. There isn't anything too fancy about them. So generally, we sew with a straight stitch. That's what we sew most seams with. And we all sew that with the stitch length of around 2.2 to 2.5. So some digital machines will have that set automatically and manual machines you might set that, but that's a standard length. The other stitch that you'll use most commonly is a zigzag stitch, which we use for when we're sewing with stretchy fabrics because the stitch will stretch with the fabric or we use it to stop the edges from fraying to finish a seam allowance once we've done the main seam. So that's the zigzag stitch. Now, all these other stitches are lovely if you like decorative stitches, but if you're not in fussed about decorative stitches, you will not use them. So you'll need a buttonhole. You'll need sometimes a couple of options of buttonholes if you like different styles of buttonholes. But generally to sew most garments, to sew the, the blouse that I'm wearing, I use a straight stitch, I use a zigzag and a buttonhole foot those um, and the button stitch, you know, those are the three things that I needed. You don't need all the other sna snazzy things. It's nice to sometimes have a speed option on your machine because then when you're starting out, you can make sure you don't go too fast by when you're getting used to controlling the pedal. But also if you're more experienced, it's nice to have that option sometimes when you're doing something quite tricky. Apart from that, that's all you need. So that's the machine and the most important things you need to know about it. Now let's have a go at doing some sewing. So I think the biggest thing to remind yourself when you're about to start sewing is just to relax. There is definitely something about a sewing machine that seems daunting and scary, but you just got to remind yourself what's the worst that can happen. Yeah, just, you know, it's, it's you're not going to sew straight, so it's not going to, you're going to forget to put the presser foot down and it'll get all a bit tangled, but you're learning, you're making mistakes. Think about when you started to learn to cook. You know, you make stuff, you burn stuff, you know, it's, it's just what happens when you're learning. So just don't worry about it. Try and remember to relax. And I also say that, you know, make it a really nice space for you. Have a cup of tea, um, you know, make sure that, you know, it's well lit so you can see what you're doing and keep put, make sure you're in a comfortable seat. So if you need a cushion to support your back, something like that, then that's really important. because Sewing can give you a really bad posture. Also get the sewing machine in a comfortable position. Now, I'm not going to give a good example of this because I'm going to be sewing at an angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. But for you, you need to have it sitting in front of you, not so you're leaning too far away and not so it's like this, so you're like that. So just get it comfortable so it feels like it's in a in the kind of an ergonomic, comfortable position. So I'm going to just sew two pieces of fabric together just to um, demonstrate how to sew. Generally, you're always going to be sewing two pieces of fabric together. There's only a couple of occasions in dressmaking when you're not doing that. But uh, that's what you want to practice with. So don't practice your first line of stitching on just one layer of fabric. And like I said earlier, cotton is much better. This is just all um, calico, which is basically cotton, unbleached cotton. Um, and uh, it's much easier to kind of hold on the machine. It doesn't fiddle and stretch and move. So you don't want to have the added challenge of that. So to start sewing, what we're going to do is tuck it under the presser foot. And before we drop the presser foot down, we're going to make sure that we're lining up the edge there uh, at the number 10 guide. Now, most machines will have a little 10 marker on the base of them, of them and that will indicate 10 millimeters or a centimeter, which is a very common seam allowance. So your seam allowance is basically from the edge of the fabric to where you're sewing. And you need to keep that the same for all your projects, depending on whether you are making it up as you go along. So maybe you're making something simple, but you need to kind of think about when you're cutting your fabric out, what your seam allowance will be and stick to that. And if you're making something that's a pattern that's been designed for you, then you need to make sure you're following what they say. Because if you mix them up, then you're going to get a wonky or slightly smaller or slightly bigger um, item at the end. 
There are other markings as well, so other things like five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters. There can be lots, depends on the machine, but there's usually different markings um, so that you can accurately follow a seam allowance. So I'm making sure that I'm on the 10 there. And now I'm going to lower my presser foot down onto the fabric so that it holds it in place. And basically I am a couple of stitches just in from the edge of the fabric there. When we start sewing, we don't really want to start right on the edge because that can then sometimes get all tangled up. So just in from the edge. And if you make sure that you, one of the common things is not to put that presser foot down, but do make sure the presser foot is down. Sometimes a little post-it on the machine saying, presser foot down. Because if you don't have the presser foot down, the tensions of the machines are all wrong and it will just go all loopy. Um, so you can't break the machine, so don't worry, but it will make a funny noise and, and sew very loopy. So I'm going to make sure my foot pedal's in the right position. Again, reminding you, thinking about comfort. I'm actually sewing with shoes today because I'm used to that because I often sew in the sort of work environment. But for you, you probably will sew with um, bare feet or with your socks on without shoes on. So if you've got slippers on, I'd recommend taking them off because you generally can feel the control the pedal um, much more easily with bare, bare feet or just your socks. So let's start. So I'm going to put the speed down on this so we're going nice and slowly. And what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to do two, two or three stitches and then we're going to stop. Okay, so there we go, did that. Now in order to make sure that this seam doesn't come undone, what we do is we then go back over those stitches. So there's a button or a lever, depending on your machine, that often looks like that with a little arrow that will you press down and for the entire time you're pressing that down as well as pressing on your pedal it will just send the direction of the sewing backwards so now we're pressing it again and it's going backwards and I want to go up to the edge of the fabric again and then I'm going to come back forwards again and so what that will have done is secured the seam I'm just going to go a little bit faster So you'll see what my hands are doing. I've got one hand here and one hand here. The machine, if I let go, the machine is doing all the kind of feeding through. There's little teeth underneath that feed the fabric through. And then the presser foot helps keep the fabric in place. And what's happening with the threads is the top thread is going down. It's going around looping and pulling up the bottom thread. And then the tension of the two are pulling against each other, which forces the fabric together and the machine to stitch it together. So that's what's going on. Your job is to just guide it. It's doing everything that it needs to do. You just need to guide it. So keeping the fabric nice and flat on the machine and steering it and try not to look at the needle, but looking at your guideline. So making sure that the edge of your fabric is staying on that number 10. It's not leaving that. And then making sure that this is nice and flat. Now I'm working with a little piece of fabric, which I recommend doing at first. But when you're, you've got a big cushion or a big garment, you're going to have to hold the fabric a bit more steadily because the weight of it might pull it off the machine. So we're coming up to the end. Now, just as you've started, you need to finish in the same way, reversing back over a few stitches and then coming back to the end. But what I want to do is I'm not going to do it just so I can show you the difference between them. So I'm just going to leave it there. But what you would do is press down there, reverse back a few stitches, then come back forwards again and then pull it out. So pulling it out, lift up the presser foot, pull it out. You have got the uh, cutter there and then I've got my snips. You can cut the threads. If you've reversed, you can cut your thread super, super short. And if you if you've see now, I'm going to try and pull that apart. All my strength, <laughs> trying to pull that apart and I just can't pull it apart. It's so strong. Here, where we didn't reverse, coming apart. So you can see, you can't just tie a knot in the thread like you would with hand sewing. You do need to reverse to make it stick and to make it stay. And that is how you sew a seam. That's just a nice little introduction to sewing. The big thing when you start sewing is just start easy. Don't try anything too tricky, too hard. You'll get a lot more satisfaction and pleasure out of it if you just do it in small steps. I hope you found it interesting. If you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe so you get more videos like this, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.